Hi everybody, welcome to Living Life. Today's Living Life devotional is Remember to Love and Obey the Lord. We are in the book of Deuteronomy and Moses is reminding God's people that they need to love and obey the Lord. So in our study today, we're going to take a look at why and how you can love and obey the Lord. But it's important for us before we get into the scripture to know that this is a reminder to God's people. It's an encouragement. And the people of God had been in the desert for 40 years and they were now getting ready to go into the promised land. And it had been a long 40 years in the desert. Many miracles, many good things have happened. Many challenges has happened. The group had grown older, and there was even another generation. So Moses now was taking this time to remind the people that they need to love and obey God. There was so much going on. They were getting ready. They were building. They were packing. They were getting ready to move. But Moses wanted to remind them, don't forget the most important, to love and obey the Lord. So let's look at the scripture together. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verses 1 through 12. Love the Lord your God and keep His requirements, His decrees, His laws, and His commands always. Remember today that your children were not the ones who saw and experienced the discipline of the Lord your God, His majesty, His mighty hand, His outstretched arm, the signs He performed and the things He did in the heart of Egypt, both to Pharaoh king of Egypt and to his whole country what he did to the Egyptian army, to its horses and chariots, how he overwhelmed them with the waters of the Red Sea as they were pursuing you, and how the Lord brought lasting ruin on them. It was not your children who saw what he did for you in the wilderness until you arrived at this place, and what he did to Dathan and Abiram, sons of Eliab the Reubenite, when the earth opened its mouth right in the middle of all Israel and swallowed them up with their households, their tents, and every living thing that belonged to them. But it was your own eyes that saw all these great things the Lord has done. Observe, therefore, all the commands I am giving you today, so that you may have the strength to go in and take over the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess, and so that you may live long in the land the Lord swore to your ancestors to give to them and their descendants, a land flowing with milk and honey. The land you are entering to take over is not like the land of Egypt from which you have come, where you planted your seed and irrigated it by foot, as in a vegetable garden. But the land you are crossing the Jordan to take possession of is a land of mountains and valleys that drinks rain from heaven. It is a land the Lord your God cares for. The eyes of the Lord your God are continually on it from the beginning of the year to its end. As we go into this study today, love and obey the Lord, it's important to know who Moses is speaking to. What is the context? Who is his audience? And his audience is the second generation. You know, the first generation of Jews that were in the desert, they had all died off by now. You know, they were the ones that 40 years prior came from Egypt and they complained and they criticized, they mumbled, they murmured, and they wanted to go back to Egypt. Okay, that generation had mostly died. So this second generation is a very special generation that Moses is addressing. And he's reminding them of all the miracles that God did. The miracles that he did in Egypt and the miracles that he did in the desert. You know, the miracles that God did in Egypt were the ten plagues. When the Pharaoh and his army was chasing the Jews through the desert, God opened up the Red Sea and he swallowed Pharaoh's army. So God did many miracles in Egypt. And then when they were in the desert, this second generation as children, you know, as teenagers, they saw the ground swallow up and eat the people that were rebellious against God. They saw the pillar of fire. They saw the lightning and the smoke on the mountain, on Mount Sinai, when Moses received the Ten Commandments. So this young generation, this second generation, they had seen many miracles that God had performed in front of them. 
So Moses is reminding them and encouraging them to remember those things, and that is why they should love and obey God. And then Moses prepares them for the promised land. He tells them, when you go into the promised land, you're going to notice that the promised land is very different and very unique compared to Egypt. He said to them, when you were in Egypt, it was like a garden that you had to plant the seed, you had to water, you had to toil, you had to dig, you had to bring water from afar because Egypt was a very dry desert. So Moses is telling them, this promised land that you're going to, there's beautiful mountains, there's valleys, there's rain, it is very lush. So Moses is telling them, you're going into this promised land, it's so beautiful, it's like nothing you've ever seen before. Okay, God has this beautiful place prepared for you, and because God did these miracles in Egypt, He did the miracles in the desert, and he has this wonderful and beautiful promised land waiting for you, this is the reason why you should love and obey God. Okay? So the application for you and me today, number one, what is our Egypt? Where did we come from? For you and I, it's for our past life, when the old man, our sin or our sinfulness, when we were in addiction, when we were slaves to sin, when we were living for ourselves or we were addicted to something, that represents our Egypt. See, God freed us from that. And when we were in the desert, when we were in the wilderness, when we've experienced isolation, alienation, when we felt alone or depressed, when we were wandering in our wilderness, God provided miracles for us in those times of loneliness. That's our desert. And then what is our promised land? Our promised land is the kingdom of God. Jesus came preaching and teaching about the kingdom of God. You know, behold, the kingdom of God is near. You know, the kingdom of God for us is the good news. The kingdom of God for us is our salvation. The kingdom of God for us is answer to prayer. The kingdom of God for you and me is the church. It's the Christian community. That is our promised land. You know, and the word of God is reminding us that God's promised land, his kingdom, his church, his word, his promises is much better than Egypt. So don't go back to Egypt. It's much better than living in the desert. You know, the welfare state. God had to provide for them quail every day. He had to provide for them manna every day. He had to provide for them water from the rock every day. But in the promised land, they could have their own farm. They could have their own ranch. They could have their own house. They could have animals. They could be self-sufficient in the promised land. So the encouragement for you, my friend, today from God's word is we need to let the past be the past. Egypt, let it go. We need to stop being stuck in the desert. 40 years, we've been in it too long. And my friends, it's time for us to cross that river Jordan and to go into the promised land and start living the life that God has promised us to live. So that's why we should love and obey God. And that's how we can love and obey God. So let's close. As we close in prayer today, love and obey God, let's just keep in mind, Moses reminded the people of God the way they can love and obey God is by merely remembering everything that God had done for them. And as we pray together right now, and we ask the Lord to fill our hearts with that desire and that passion to love Him and obey Him, where does that love come from? Where does that love well up from? Well, first of all, it comes from the Holy Spirit. But secondly, it comes when we remember how God saved us and how He liberated us from our past sinfulness, our past addictions, and that God has a wonderful promise for us of eternal life, salvation, and living in His kingdom. 
So let's pray together. Heavenly Father God, uh, let us receive this exhortation today to love you and obey you. And the way we can love you and obey you is to remember, Lord God, how you saved us, how you set us free, have you, how you've watched over us as we've walked in this wilderness. So bless my brothers and my sisters right now. In Jesus' name, fill their hearts with love, fill their hearts with praise, and help them every single day, help us every single day to love you and to obey your word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.